All right, so I'm blending these. I'm working on this element and I can take my eraser and just erase away the sky lightly like this. But this sky is pretty even. There are some other ways I can try selecting it. One is with the magic wand tool at a tolerance of 32 with contiguous turned on. I can click on the sky color and it will click a range of those pixels, right? And then if I hold down shift, I can add to that additional colors like that cloud color, these darker blues. Now there's a danger here, right? Because the computer is just a tool. So it can screw up and it will. So you see that these colors inside the mountain are very similar to the sky color. So it added them in. So you decide whether the magic wand is helpful, but any selection can be altered with any other selection tool. So now I can move to the lasso and I can hold down option to subtract. And I can correct that mistake, right? Along the edge. Now, that might make sense. Like I could just delete. And then I have this hard edge mountain up against this hard edge mountain. But in fact, if I want to show that one is in front of the other, you don't want to just have a hard edge right up against a hard edge, like two pieces of cut paper. Instead, especially with organic materials like these, it's good to use soft edges and use blending. Notice how this starts to look more believable, right, than just a really strong cutout shape. I could even make my own mountaintop just by cutting into it. So it's, it depends whether I want it to look like it's in the distance or not. But I'm going to recommend that you um, soften the edges that you can. So instead of using the magic wand, or I could use the magic wand this way. This is actually something I like to do quite a bit. So I select all that blue with the magic wand tool. And I don't worry that it's going to cut into the mountain a little extra because I'm not going to just hit delete and get rid of all of it. Instead, I am going to use it as a mask. So once you have a selection active, if I use the eraser, it will only erase what's selected. So even though I'm on this layer, it won't let me erase from that part of the mountain. It will only allow me to erase from the part of the mountain that's selected. Then I use this big soft eraser and I start taking down that blue, leaving a bit of that haze. Now the other reason you want extra space to overlap is because you might decide you want to move that mountain. Sometimes there just ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river wide enough. So you have to use your transform tools and there you go. That's the one I'm missing. And you make it work, but notice something I am not doing. I won't do until next class and in the, in the next demos. I am not changing the opacity on my eraser. I am always erasing at 100%. That is important because otherwise you end up with ghosted hard edges. That doesn't mean I'm always erasing 100% of everything because I'm using a soft edged 100% eraser. And I want to just make sure there's no trace of those hard edges left. Okay, good. Now, I might decide that those mountains are great, but the color is still really wrong because when I adjusted it, it was getting way too red in the bottom part of it, but I wanted to get more red here. So what I can do is I can actually just select a part of it, not just for erasing, but also for my direct adjustments. So I'm gonna select kind of a big part of it. And if I wanna be really safe about it, I'm going to duplicate. So now I have a, a subset element just so I can adjust it its color balance separately and push it more red. Now this is important 
because now I can erase from that element and blend in that color with the one behind it. So it's all just done with rough selections and soft erasers. That is the key. And I think that looks better than this. Right, that color is getting better. Then I can merge them back together by selecting both of them and hitting Command E or going up to Layer Merge Layers so that I can erase from them again. And the fine tune erasing we're going to do is just using a smaller brush and probably using your stylus and your tablet. So this is 100%, but once I get kind of closer, then I take my eraser down to a lower percentage, and then it starts to look like mist, you know, coming off the peaks. So that's how we'll fine tune it. There's also this problem, this little highlight here, that ridge, um, might, might mean I want to move my mountain up, but I don't know yet. So first let me um, put in my other elements. So next is the water tower. This is a great example of where I can use the selection tools. Because look at that blue sky behind that silhouette of the water tower. That's perfect for this magic wand tool. And it has default tolerance of 32. I can add to it. And I'm pretty confident that it's not going to screw up and take away part of the water tower, but I can check its edge anyway. I can even add this little cutout, this little cutaway. Just holding down shift, adding to it. All right. So now this might be one where I can just hit delete. And you'll see it will give me a little residual edge. So I'm still going to want to clean it up and use like the, the fine tune eraser when I get there. But now let's play with levels. I want to brighten up the midtones for this one. Because this is in the foreground. And my background's pretty dark. In fact, I might want to brighten it up almost to that level. Then I want to play with the color. Color balance, probably put it. I think a little more yellow. I think I'm going to have like the warms come forward in this. And then even in my shadows, because I really warmed it up so much, I'm going to actually push my shadows a little cooler. More cyans and more blues. My highlights, I can put a little bit of red into those. Okay. Next element. This. Wildly different. Let's use the magic wand. So if this happens, you get this interior. It kind of cut it out well, but I'm going to use my lasso and hold down option and kind of rough cut this and take that whole part out of the selection so it doesn't erase it. I don't want to erase too much, basically. And then I can go back in and fine tune it. Okay. Take that chunk away. A lot of processing power here. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to save your work. You've already put your name on it, so you're just going to use Command S. And the last step I'll do is I'm just going to play with levels on that foreground element. 
So we're looking past it. And then color balance. Yeah, you want to keep it as a PSD file. Anything with layers we save as a PSD file until we're all finished. And then I'm going to play with color balance and warm it up. So I do have lab hours today. Even running a little bit longer than usual. Should you want to keep working? But this is basically where I want you to have it by next class. I have now filled up my whole uh, sketch area. And I've mostly gotten rid of those hard artificial edges. right? But I still have a lot of cleanup to do in transitions. What we'll do next class is we will transition everything. We will add new elements where they're needed. And we're also going to add what's called a texture fill, like an atmosphere that everything will exist and bring it together. That will really push the mountains behind this water tower. Because right now, everything's in sharp focus. You know, those mountains are just as sharp as that, but a texture fill will allow atmosphere to build up. And so those mountains will get softer and, and a little fuzzier in the background. So save your work. You can just hit Command S. And then you can move all of your, your assets that you've saved to the desktop into your Assignment 1 folder and keep that in documents. Okay. That is it for now.